So here's a quick walkthrough for trying to get through and get your charge on your amino acids. One of the things you'll need to know is what the structures are for your amino acids, or more importantly, really what the PKAs are. So there's two common PKAs that are similar for all of them. That's PKA1 and PKA2 as listed in this chart. One belongs to the acid, one belongs to the amine. The acid is about a 2.5 for all amino acids and the amine is about a 9 for all amino acids. So if you just remember those two, that'll hold out and work for all of your peptides. Uh, the one that's a little bit trickier is that you have R groups. Those R groups have different pKa values. So what you'll need to do is memorize those R groups. Um, so that's these guys. Um, however you go through and memorize that is up to you, but you need to know those to be able to go through and answer this kind of a question. So determining the charge on a 5-amino acid peptide or longer it ultimately isn't going to matter. So you want to identify your acid-base groups that are exposed to the solvent. That's your primary thing. So there's two acid, or there's multiple sections that allow for exposure. Number one, you have the amine group on the left of the, poly, of the amino acid. Uh, your amino acids are always list, listed um, amine to acid. So you will always have an exposed amine and you will always have an exposed acid, and the acid being on the right hand side. The next thing you've got to go through and do is identify the R groups that are now accessible. You won't see any amines off of any of the amino acids in between because those amines and acid functional groups are involved in the peptide bond. So their chemistry is irrelevant. Um, so then you identify your R groups based off the ones I told you to memorize. Uh, I just listed the one letter codes because it's a little bit easier to deal with that in this case. So you just identify those amino acids and deal, move on to the next part. Uh, officially what you need to do is compare the pKa of the amino acid to a given pH. Uh, so it doesn't matter what pH they tell you to go, you just need to adjust your answer according to that. So if your pH is greater than the pKa, then the functional group is in its deprotonated state. So you have to know protonated versus deprotonated states, which I think you do. Um, if the pH is less than the pKa, then it's in its protonated state. Unofficially, uh, you don't need the pKa strictly as long as you understand something from organic chemistry. So if the solution is more acidic than the functional group, then protonated. If the solution is more basic, then deprotonated. Uh, once you've established all those different charge states and protonation states, you then know the charge for each of those functional groups, and then you just add them up throughout the molecule. So we have a real quick example down here. Um, we'd start at the left. We've got our amine. Uh, the amine has a pKa because you memorized it already. Because you memorized it already, about a 9.1. If we're running at a pH of 7, so remember that has to be specified in the problem. Um, we are with a functional group that is more basic than the pH because an amine functional group is basic which means we need to then be in the protonation or protonated state because the solution is more acidic than our functional group so we have to protonate if we protonate the amine our charge is positive I don't care about C or A um, was it cysteine or alanine because there are groups don't have uh, acid-base functional groups, so we don't care about it. We can then move to arginine, uh, and I included the structures, uh, which would have been helpful if I would included the pKa's. I don't remember what they were, but you could look them up. Uh, the other option is going through and looking at that unofficial system. And if I've got this right, we're looking at, again, roughly an amine. Um, we may need to be careful on the pKa's here. Uh, if we've got an, an amine and we're at a solution that's more acidic, then what we're looking at as the protonated state, this should be positive, should be protonated. Uh, tyrosine, so our acidic functional group is down here. Knowing the pKa comes in handy on this one because tyrosine is not a super obvious, it's not an acid or a base. Uh, its pKa is 9, uh, roughly. So if we now compare again back to the pH, it needs to be in its protonated state. It is, it's neutral. So it contributes no charge to the overall molecule. Move to the next one, which is a flip of our histidine, unfortunately, but that's the way it's going to work. Um, 
again, I don't remember its uh, pKa, um, but all of these were conveniently drawn at pH 7, so we do know that that's positive. And the last one, our carboxylic acid, uh, which is a pKa of about 2. We are at a more, uh, or our pH is more basic than our functional group, so I need to be in the deprotonated state. So what I'll do is change that to O minus, so my charge on that molecule is now O minus. So we now go through and check. Positive cancels minus. Positive, positive, zero. The overall charge on this guy is a plus two. Okay. So real quick walkthrough. Hopefully that helps you out. Let me know if you need more.